Hello, Booktube. I thought we'd get in a quick end of day book haul uh, as the sun goes down here in Boston. I've got a few here. A few packages to go through, and we'll see what kind of trouble we can get into. <laughs> uh, what's this first one? From Harvard University Press. The War Within. Oh my, it's another olive book. Uh, stories from the Siege of Leningrad. Oh my. There's a battle-hardened Russian woman and her babushka in her arms. This comes out in January. Uh, must be from open Soviet archives, yes? It must be the, the one of the rationales behind such a thing, is to go with the 80 million Leningrad books. The voices from, probably all sorts of... Oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right. It looks like another olive book. <laughs> it's... Uh, my Cat, Yugoslavia. <laughs> this is a novel by Pachim Statovici. Uh, who is, who is uh, Pachim Statovici lives in Helsinki. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in 1980s Yugoslavia, a young Muslim girl is married off to a man she hardly knows, and things quickly go wrong. Shortly thereafter, the country is torn apart by war, and she and her family flee to Finland, where her son Beckham grows up to become a social outcast. Not just an immigrant in a country suspicious of foreigners, but also a gay man in an unaccepted society, whose only real companion is a boa constrictor whom he lets roam around his apartment. Then one day at a gay bar, Beckham meets a talking cat who moves in with him. Okay. <laughs> the things they get up to in Helsinki. <laughs> oh, but let's not dwell. We're running out of natural light. <laughs> Let's see what else we can do here as my room falls into shadow. <laughs> uh, oh my. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. This is uh, A Poet's Dublin by Evan Boland. I did not know this was coming out. This comes out in early November. And it is... Uh, oh, wow. It's, it's lovely black and white photos matched with her great poetry. Oh, that is fantastic. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't think... It's early November. I don't think I have time to pitch this anywhere, but I'll definitely consume it, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, much like uh, Max at Well Done Books, I love all things Ireland. <laughs> uh, and like him, I lived there for a time. A little bit longer than he did, but uh, once you try it, it never goes away. <laughs> uh, okay, this one I don't know either. I, those are these things I'm getting that I didn't ask for. This is called Buffering, Unshared, ta unshared Tales of a Life Fully Loaded. With that horrible symbol on the back <laughs> that we all know so well. <laughs> uh, what is this? As a professional digital demigod, I spend a lot of time walking the line between public and private. However, there's only so much that can be communicated through 140 characters or a six-minute vlog. Okay, that leads me to believe that Hannah Hart is known to some of you, <laughs> and that I should probably find out who she is. Uh, I'm sure that her, this is uh, October 18th, I'm sure that her comment about the, being a demigod is tongue-in-cheek, but still, it bespeaks some kind of fame, of which I'm totally ignorant, so uh, I'll need to find out who she is before I can pronounce. <laughs> uh, this is cool. It's like something out of Dracula. We're racing against the sun. <laughs> oh my. Oh, fantastic. All right, another thing that I didn't know was coming that I want. Uh, this is Probing the Ethics of Holocaust Culture. It's a, uh, an anthology of writings edited by Claudio Fogu, Wolf Kansteiner, and Todd Pressner. Please give me a long date on this. That would be nice. No, October 17th. <laughs> God. All right, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's just a collection of, of essays on the Holocaust. Fantastic. Fantastic. Boy, oh boy, a lot of these are, are vying for the status of read immediately, which is not something I usually encounter in a mail hall. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. This is from Coach House Books, Canlit. Uh, the first one is by Laura Broadbent, and it's called In on the Great Joke. 
What do you get when you cross Lao Tzu with an application for a university teaching position? What do you get when you give W.G. Sebald and Claris Lispector the ability to speak from the afterlife? I suppose you'd get even more bad prose. What happens if a girl is stopped at a red light for an entire year? In On the Great Joke is a palace of hybridity where film structure informs poetry, poetry alters the essay, and essay recalibrates the joke. How do you want to make a bet that not one of those three things happens in this book? <laughs> not one at all. Not <laughs> So it's a slim volume of poetry, of canned poetry. Uh, and is this the same thing? Uh, this is Three Summers by Lisa Robertson. Of course, Jason Purcell will know who these people are. He's probably talked to them or interviewed them. I don't know him at all. This one is inspired by Gustave Flaubert's Three Tales and Gertrude Stein's Three Lives. Three Summers is a grappling with time, form, and embodiment. And it is yet another slim volume of poetry. Goodness gracious. <laughs> if I'm on shaky ground with the slim volumes of American poetry, you can just imagine how things are with the can poetry. Uh, but into every book hall, some misfires must fall, right? What have we got here? America's Dream Palace, Middle East Expertise and the Rise of the National Security State by Osama F. Khalil, who is an assistant professor of U.S. and Middle Eastern History at the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs in Syracuse University. And this is about U.S. policy in the Middle East, and it is also October 17th, good lord! <laughs> And I didn't get galleys for any of these things. All these things that are showing up in the very in next week. <laughs> I can still review them for open letters. So it's not a lost cause, but it'd be nice if I was getting more uh, like this. Something like this. This is an advanced copy. Yeah, see, this is for February. What is this? Oh, good. Oh, good. I've heard a lot about this thing. It's called Running by Kara Hoffman. And it's got a pecker on the cover. <laughs> Can't go wrong, can you? <laughs> uh... This is uh, the she's the critically acclaimed author of Be Safe, I Love You, and So Much Pretty, and this is a dark, breathtaking novel of love, fr and friendship, and survival set in Athens' red light district in the late 1980s. Unlike anyone else on BookTube, I have actually been to Athens' red light district in the late 1980s. <laughs> I tell you, the quality you get on this channel. <laughs> Running follows the lives of three friends and lovers. Queer English poet Milo Rollick, Eaton dropout Jasper Leffy, like the River Leffy, forgetting things, uh, uh, and 17 year old Bridie Sullivan, an American with a fascination for fire. The three meet working as runners. They ride trains looking for tourists to lure to, back to a $4 a night Hotel Olympus and in exchange stay for free on the hotel's condemned top floor and get a few drachmas, which they immediately spend at the bar around the corner. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the pub sheet says it's a deeply romantic, deeply transgressive story, and that the emotional and experiences Hoffman lived uh, pulse through the pages of this stunning incendiary novel. The experiences that Hoffman lived... Hoffman began writing running over 25 years ago when she was working as a runner herself. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, it hardly matters because it's February of 2017, which means I have time to soak it in and see if it works. Uh, great, fantastic. Uh, got a couple more, and that's good because we're almost out of light. <laughs> uh, what is this? Is this? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I wonder why it had a. Uh, Deadline slip on it. This is Hercus. This is a this is a paid review. Hawk's flight. Joseph Walking Horse Manawa returns to Broken River, Oklahoma, from Vietnam, a broken man, severely injured in battle. The full blood Cherokee lives with limited mobility and an addiction to painkillers. He takes to dull the chronic agony of his wounds. It's a burden he cannot bear, and Horse takes his own life. George Wheeler, a member of Horse's U.S. Army Ranger unit, comes to Broken visit. Broken River to visit his comrade, only to discover he's arrived too late. In Horse's place, George finds Hawk, an angry young man struggling with Horse's suicide and his father's alcoholism. Huh. Novel. Okay. A Vietnam and American Indian novel. Okay. Uh, 
sounds a good deal more promising than most of the stuff I review for her. <laughs> but, uh, I also like uh, I also like the cover, just the the uh, the chevrons as both an arrow and wings, but also military. That's I, that's nice and simply done. Uh, and then we've got what is this last thing here? There's the light fades completely. Oh, fantastic! Incredible. Oh boy. Okay, this comes out in a week, but in this case, I don't mind because I'm going to read it tonight. So we've had this has been a, a book haul of books vying for the read next, <laughs> and this wins hands down. This is the day the revolution began by uh, taught by N.T. Wright. Uh, uh, it's subtitled "Reconsidering the Meaning of Jesus's Crucifixion." Uh, those of you, some of you might know uh, Tom Wright's Christian writing. All of you should. He's really, really good. Uh, and uh, I'd be willing to bet that this is a theme he's been working on for quite some time. It's run through a lot of his books. Uh, the the singular nature of the crucifixion in, in in the larger narrative of Christianity and the larger narrative of world religions. Oh my, okay. <laughs> well, uh, so this has, been, this has been a battle for the nightstand. <laughs> and, we, and we have a winner. We have N.T. Wright. <laughs> so, and there you go. That is uh, a late in the day book haul as the sun slowly fades below the horizon of Arnold Aboretum. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll see you soon, BookTube. And thank you for sticking with me as the light faded. <laughs>